On the next episode of Gym Girl Chats, we have someone who is a business owner, a new mom, an educator, and just an all-around incredible human being. So welcome, Alex Redman, to the PD Podcast. Thank you, Sue. I'm so excited to be here. I know. I need to, before we get started, I need to tell people how we met because it still, to this day, like shocks me and also makes me a little bit sad of how everything ended up the way that it did. (laughs) So Alex and I ended up both living in Dublin, Ohio, where I live currently. And I didn't know that. I didn't know her. And actually even found out before that, we ended up at the same college at the same time. And we're in many different places like along our life at the same time, which is just, you know, insane to really think about of like, what are the odds that that would happen? And then Alex, my Alex came in one day and was like, there's this girl, Alex Redmond, she lives in town, and I really want to do content with her. And I then like ended up following you. And then you were like, I literally move to Colorado, like tomorrow. So we need to film like (laughs) ASAP. And we ended up filming like the day that she left for Colorado. And if you guys have been following her, then you know, like the move and everything that happened with the movers was like... horrible. But that morning, like came over early in the morning and we filmed together and she literally started the drive to Colorado later that day. And I was so sad because I was very nervous to meet you just because I didn't know you. And I like was anxious of like, what if like I we just don't mesh. And then we're like trying to do this stuff together. And we only have like this short amount of time. And then you and I ended up like hitting it off so quickly. And I was like, Oh, that's so awesome. You live in town. (laughs) And you're like, I literally am leaving. Uh, But since then, I have come and visited you in Colorado a handful of times. And we'll actually be there here in July um, to hang out. And I'm so excited for Zach and Alex to meet because I think they are going to hit it off. Um, So I'm very, very excited for that connection to be made. Oh my gosh, I know that was so wild how it all worked out. I know. So fun and also so sad. I thought the same thing I told Zach. I was like, well, just made a new friend today and (laughs) now we're moving across the country. So that's perfect. Yeah, but good thing that we love Colorado. So we have been um, and spent some really great days together going on some hikes, of course, getting some flower child um, and just enjoying time together. So I have very much so I'm glad you moved someplace that I like. So I still get to see you um, and we still get to hang out. I know. I can't wait for you to be here. I know. It's going to be a ton of fun. And if you also don't follow Alex, I said that she is a new mom and her baby Bodhi, which is like the cutest name ever, is about to turn four months old. So how has a new mom life been um, and kind of adjusting to that? Oh my gosh, it's been amazing. It's it seriously has been so much fun. Um, you know, when they say you can't really be prepared for it, that's so true. It's been so many emotions, but adjustment has been going well. Um, now that we've gotten over the kind of like the initial six first six weeks, it's been going a lot better. I'm finally starting to get in a routine um, coming up here in four months, like starting to feel a lot better physically and mentally. So that's good. And he's doing amazing too. That's awesome. Yeah, you've done an incredible job of documenting stuff over on Instagram and being able to showcase like a lot of the core work and just being able to stay active throughout the whole pregnancy, which I think a lot of times when it comes to um, women who are pregnant, they get into their heads of like, I can't do all of these things because I'm pregnant. And I feel like you really pushed a great message along of do what you can. You might not be able to do everything that you used to do, but really do what you can and just try to stay active in whatever way, even if it's just working on core work, because you really push forward a a lot of just doing core work is going to make a huge difference throughout the process. And I can see it very clearly within seeing what you look like four months postpartum um, and being able to see like the incredible transformation that you've already had. Thanks. Yeah, it is. It's so important. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, you know, but if you can stay active in whatever way feels good for you, it's just going to benefit you so much through pregnancy and labor and delivery and then postpartum recovery as well. And you mentioned something that you did every single day while you were pregnant. So what was that one thing that you did every single day? Walking every day. No matter, I mean, it could be a five minute walk, it could be a longer one, but that was a non negotiable for me. Um, even if I felt like crap, like especially in the first trimester, if I could just get outside and walk a few steps, it that's a win, you know count that as a win for the day. Oh, a hundred percent. Now this is a little bit off topic, but it's a very important question of what order do you get ready in? 
So do you do hair first, makeup first, get your clothes on first? What order do you go in? Because this is very important to me. So do you see what I look like right now as we're <laughs> I mean, speaking? Generally <laughs> speaking, I mean, I don't get ready every day by any means. I look like a oh, man a, a trash bag most of the time. Uh, but when you are like getting ready and getting everything together, because like if I'm not filming, like I'm not wearing makeup, I am just my hair's on top of my head. That's just what I'm doing. But if I'm filming, then I will put in the extra effort. <laughs> well, if on the odd chance that I do get ready for the day, I think I do I do makeup first and then hair. Mm-hmm. And then I change. Yeah. I put it up as a poll on my story the other day and people were saying that they like put their clothes on first. And I was like, first, I don't want to get my clothes dirty. But second, I want to stay yeah. in comfy clothes as long as possible. Exactly. So I'm going to put on any clothes that I'm changing into last second. And I normally do my hair first because sometimes it might have to like sit for a little bit before it's like, okay, maybe I run my hands through it. Or um, like if there's, I have it like pinned up or something like that. So it can like sit in it. But I do understand for people who like their hair falls really quickly of like doing their hair last. But I just feel like I can like go through my makeup really quickly. But my hair is something that I can't always do as quickly. So I'd rather do my hair first and then it'd be like, okay, if I get makeup on great, but like the hair, I feel like makes more of a difference for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. Yeah, I, I do kind of the opposite where my hair takes like two seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'll do makeup and then, which t also takes two seconds. <laughs> I just, I'm like minimal mm -hmm. everything these days. <laughs> Hey, that's completely fine. And you do have really nice skin. So I have found with as my skin getting like cleared up more and more because I used to struggle with acne a lot more that I just feel so much more confident not wearing anything and just being able to be that minimalist look. Yeah, I feel I've, I've been there too. Makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your guilty pleasure? Like, is it, do you like to go on and watch like Japanese cleaning videos? Um, do you like to... Um, I don't know, wa watch a certain type of video or do something that you feel like is your guilty pleasure. Oh, man. It's so funny. Like, life is just so different for me right now that when I am watching TV, it's with Zach. And right now we're watching Breaking Bad again mm -hmm. um, for the second time. But uh, probably, like, probably eat, honestly, probably eating like a nice, sweet treat. Mm -hmm. At the towards the end of the day, is something I always look forward to getting my Ollie pop and then having like something sweet that just kind of like tops off the day. What has been your go to sweet treat recently? Okay, so do you know those little peanut butter cups from Costco? Mm -hmm. They're um, they're I guess supposed to be like a better for you. They have minimal ingredients. I can't think of what they're actually called, but they are amazing. Yes, I need to I have those ready for me every night. I don't have a Costco membership, but my mom does. And I need to just start planning to go with her more frequently because there are so many steals at Costco and those being one of them for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went in, we got it for the diapers and now I go for the <laughs> peanut butter cups. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. What are your other favorite snacks throughout the the week or the day? Um, now my one of my favorite breakfast like quick breakfast when i'm not in the mood to really make anything would be there's the um 20 grams of protein yogurt mm -hmm. missing out on the name i'm like blanking on it it's not chobani okios okios yes yep that one yeah and then i'll add so i like the um just the vanilla mm -hmm. flavor and then i add granola and a banana i love and granola. it's so good that combination is just really good mm-hmm do you have any go-to granolas? Yes. Um, Purely Elizabeth. Yes. That is so good. <laughs> yeah. I have so many boxes. I just, and I was never really a granola person, but ever since trying hers, I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. And I put it on a lot of things. I'm not like a granola person in regards to like just eat granola by itself. I know some people love yeah. it that way, but definitely when it comes to yogurt, I love a granola or like if you ever make like an acai bowl type of thing, then like I need the texture change. Like I can't just have all the same texture. Yeah. 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 Hers is the bomb though. That's my favorite. Well, what has working out looked like postpartum for you? Yeah. So I feel like I was just talking to someone about this. I feel like so many women have an expectation or maybe maybe it's just me, but like almost feel a pressure to jump back into things 
like you feel like it's going to be no big deal, but it is a big deal getting back into a routine. And the first six weeks, I mean, I didn't do anything but walk um, very short distances. And then I'm just now, I'm what, three, this is week three of getting back to strength training and I'm almost four months postpartum. So like I didn't even pick up weights until after three months, um, which that was very surprising to me. I just didn't think that it was going to take that long. Um, but I learned the importance of your pelvic floor health and everything. And so taking it slow is just something that was really important to me. So my routine to answer your question, my routine now is I'm doing three days of workouts, strength training a week. And I've just now been like cleared by my pelvic floor therapist to start adding in. If I want to do any more intense cardio, like a jog or a run or something, I'm just now today kind of like cleared to do, to, to do that. So we'll see if I actually start running or not, but. (laughs) Have you, are you a runner (laughs) much at all? Have you ever been a runner? I used to be a really big runner. Yeah. And then I burned myself out and haven't really ran in a couple of years. <laughs> it's like all the craze now. And so I feel like I'm learning so much about either people who were runners or just people coming into running. And so that's why I was like, man, did I know that she was a runner or not? Because is it just something that I'm blanking on? Because I feel like so many people are doing it now. Oh, I know. No, I used to before I got into strength training. That's all I did was run constantly. And then I just hated it so much because i I burnt myself out. Mm -hmm. If you were to give yourself advice from like you now to you directly postpartum, what would that advice be? It'd be to be very gentle with yourself and give yourself a ton of grace. There's, there's really no rush. And for me, I'm, you know, I've always been super active and try to stay fit. And so that was pretty hard for me to wait and just kind of coast. Um, But there really is no timeline and you're going to get there. You just have to be patient. Mm-hmm. That is incredible advice because like you said, of you didn't know if it was just you, but I think it is most women who feel that um, pressure to kind of bounce back or get back to where they are, get back to their normal routine, um, have their bodies back in a certain place. And I think that one of the biggest things that I really preach to clients is to be able to have that grace because in just throughout pregnancy as a whole, you have different goals where your goals before might have been for body composition or um, being able to get stronger different endurance things and not saying that you can't still train for strength and endurance while you're pregnant, but each pregnancy is also going to be different where I have clients that are able to stay very active and keep a very similar routine throughout most of their pregnancy. And I have some that right at like first trimester and on, like they're still struggling within having some sort of normalcy to their routine, just because again, bodies react differently. Some people have more morning sickness. Some people just don't feel as good throughout their pregnancy. Um, and that's nothing to judge yourself on unless you're per- personally doing something to make yourself feel bad. That's nothing to judge yourself on. It's something to just be able to extend that grace to yourself of knowing that you are like meeting a whole new version of yourself and a whole new life and routine. And that's like the biggest thing is like you now have this completely new addition to your life and routine and what your day to day looks like. And you can't expect yourself to go quote unquote back or bounce back to where you were because nothing is the same. Absolutely. Yeah. And that term bounce back gets thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. And I've I've heard it so many times from people like, oh, you're going to bounce back so fast because you've been taking care of yourself. And it's like, no, even even if you are taking care of yourself, it's a totally different ballgame postpartum. After having a baby, your body has just been through so much. And it's all, I like to say, it's beautifully challenging. And yeah, there's no bounce back. It's just how can we progress forward and like treat your new <clears throat> postpartum body and life the best that you can and make the most out of it. And I think it's cool. It's like a, it's kind of like a, not a blank slate or like a fresh start, but it kind of is because it's a brand new chapter of your life and you can choose to be like, you know what, now I'm going to do everything I can to stay strong and healthy, um, especially for this new human in my life so that I can be there for them the best way that I can. 
So it's kind of exciting, to be honest. It is exciting if you allow yourself to look at it that way instead of looking at it of all the things that you can't do, of looking at it of like, what is this new thing that I get to do uh, and this new experience that I get to have and what I look like throughout that experience? Because again, you get to decide that to a certain degree of like what your life looks like um, and what you show up for throughout it. Yeah, totally. And I think like to add on to that, because you're, I mean, for me, seeing my body change so much is like many women, something I've never experienced before. And you can get caught up really easily if you're not careful in the negative thought patterns and just, you know, like being upset or wishing that your body looked different or whatnot. Um, but you kind of have to switch you know, switch your mindset. And yes, it might be a little bit hard to see your body changing, but just focus on what you're able to do. Like you said, Sue, like focus on what you can do and just make the most out of it. And knowing that every little thing that you're doing, whether it's a walk or a workout or making a healthy meal for yourself, those things count and they're all moving the needle towards your goals. So that's how I like to look at it, at least. It helps me a lot. Yeah, those things count is such a good way to put it because I think that that's another thing of like, you think that, okay, I used to have all of these different capabilities or this is what I was able to do. So then when it comes to like this new chapter, you feel like I should already be able to do that because I've already done it in the past. But because it is a new version of you, it's not looking at it of like, well, I used to be able to train this many days and now I can barely get to this many days. It's like, it is a new chapter. It's something new. It's something that should still be celebrated of like, oh, I was able to get to the gym, even if in the past it was like, oh, it was super easy for me to get to the gym four times a week. And it's now it's like, oh, I'm celebrating getting to the gym two or three or like strength training two or three times a week. It's like that's still a win. Even if you could do more in the past, you're looking at what you are doing now for this like blank slate, like you stated um, in this new chapter. Yeah. Exactly. And I, you know, I thought I'd be back at the gym at week six mm -hmm. and I haven't been back yet. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm doing home workouts and that's just what works for me right now. And that's awesome. You know, I'm making it work and I'm finding ways to challenge myself at home when I don't, you know, I can be with Bodhi. I can um, not waste as much time going to the gym and just kind of that's what feels good for me right here. And that can always change too, right? Like you can always add on if it feels good or you can change things up as needed to, to fit your life where you are right now. But you have to meet yourself where you are. Yeah, 100%. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good It's terrible you. you. should lift heavy. High reps, Carbs low are weight. needed. Keto Squats are bad for your Squats needs. are great You should squat ass to grass. Toes. It's fine. It fits my mattress. It's for idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. How did you feel within going through your pregnancy and being on social media, especially as like, quote unquote, a fitness influence or even just someone in the fitness industry on social media throughout your pregnancy? Uh, what were some things that maybe you thought you weren't going to experience or different things going through that experience? Yeah, well, first, I thought it was really fun being able to share my experience because I I just I don't know. I just found a lot of joy in that phase of, of being pregnant. I thought it was just so cool. Um, of course, it's very challenging, but I have really enjoyed being able to be authentic about it and relate, you know, with other women and be able to have conversations. It was so much fun just chatting with other ladies in the DMs about different things. Um, on the flip side, social media can be brutal and definitely had negative, you know, things said to me, which is a shame, but, um, I, I don't let those things bother me. It's more like, that's just interesting how people can be that way mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of like, I don't know why you would ever be negative to someone about their pregnancy journey, but that's social media for you. So there's pros and cons with putting yourself out there, but the, I mean, it was an overwhelming amount of support and, and just like 
great conversations and people being very thankful that I was so vulnerable about certain things. Um, so it made it all worth it and, you know, hopefully helped a couple of people out there to just like stay active or be positive or whatever else that looks like for them. I think you did an incredible job throughout your pregnancy. And obviously, like I already said, through postpartum of the way that you're sharing information of not only like that vulnerability, but you're also teaching a lot of women a lot of really important things that like if we look back, and I know that you also became perinatal certified. Um, and it's something where if you look back that there's still some doctors who talk about that you shouldn't be active or there's things that you shouldn't do. And it's like, no, there's there's literal research showing that you should be active and it's only going to help you. And you just shared a lot of incredible information alongside sharing like what it's like to be a human being going through pregnancy. Um, so I felt like it was incredible and still is of like all like you just posted um, speaking of like the negativity of social media. You just recently posted a reel of like comments that were like, this is disgusting and all these other like horrible comments that I'm just like, what? Like that's the thing of like, I can't even get in the headspace to know why someone even thinks that way, let alone to go ahead and comment on someone else's. It's like, okay, I don't understand how people think that way, but you can also think it to yourself and keep it to yourself yes. instead of <laughs> commenting on it. It's like anytime I get a random negative comment, um, I'll normally be like, what's more sad? The fact that you are someone I don't know and choosing to spend your time commenting on my post and that normally exactly. gets them where they're like, uh, I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. It does not make sense exactly. to comment any of that. But you showed of like, I didn't do this for you talking about like the negative comments or the people who viewed it negatively. And then you posted like some really positive feedback that you got from women. And I think that just like encapsulates it all of being able to showcase like this is to reach these people that need to see this, that need more examples of what it looks like to have a healthy pregnancy um, and to take care of yourself throughout that pregnancy. Again, even if it doesn't look the exact same to everyone across the board. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really cool when it resonates, you know, a message that I put out there resonates with someone. I think women just need more support in this area and a lot of education, clearly, because there's so much outdated information out there and it can scare women on like, what, what can I do? What can't I do? Um, so I think spreading that the word and getting it out there is important. So it's been really cool to be able to share that. Mm -hmm. Now, within you owning a business and being a coach yourself, how has that experience been throughout your pregnancy and now postpartum? Because uh, I know like what I've kind of gone through thought process wise of like us getting closer to that um, for ourselves of like, okay, now it's everything with the business and all of the managing of the people. And how do I still show up for myself with all of these other people I need to show up for? So what did that look like for you? Well, my team laughs at me because before I went out on maternity leave, I was like, all right, y'all, I'm probably just going to take like two weeks off. I'll be, I'm here. Like it's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting myself into <laughs> and that was not the case. So I'm just, I, again, I'm just now starting, I feel like to get back into a routine and it's still some days can be, I feel like every week is just a little different, right? Like between having child, like help, um, help with Bodhi or just my day to day, like breastfeeding, all the things, there's so many new variables where I'm still trying to figure it all out. It was a lot harder than I expected to get back into it. Um, but now I'm even more motivated now that I'm like in a groove because I'm like, I have a family to take care of and I really can't slack off. Like it's, it's go time again, I guess. <laughs> How did that go with balancing those things throughout pregnancy? So did you work all the way up until you gave birth then? I did. Yeah. I was on a call with my team when my water broke. <laughs> And <laughs> that's so classic. <laughs> I was like, um, pretty sure my water just broke. I'll be right back. And then I, I my laptop stayed up. <laughs> I never came back to the call. I was off to the hospital. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, I worked um up until that day. Oh my goodness. And I'm guessing just within different systems that you put in place and then having a great team in place, um, that you've been able to really take that time for yourself. Oh yeah, for sure. Couldn't do it without my team. They're amazing and they've made it all possible. It, it was just such a good peace of mind knowing that I could step away for whatever time I needed and they had it under control. 
Yeah. I love that. I'm so glad you had that. Yeah. I know you have a really great team. So I expected that to be the case, but I did want to hear just because I know that there's different people that listen that are, of course, moms, but some are business owners or some um, working moms and just that navigation as a whole, um, it can be a lot to go through. And so I think just hearing other people's experiences is always good. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, no one knows what to expect if you've never had a kid before. And people don't really talk about the challenges and maybe it's because they don't want to scare you or or whatever. But, um, yeah, I I was a little naive thinking that I'd just (laughs) get back, get back to work the day after having Bodie. (laughs) Just open up that laptop right away, (laughs) schedule some sales calls, you know, the norm. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. Did you have any crazy, uh, pregnancy cravings? Honestly, not really. I think the one thing that I craved the most, well, Okay, two things. Crumble cookies were like a constant. I, that was yeah, a little out of control. Um, and then I really wanted Jimmy John's a lot, like just a, a nice sandwich. <laughs> Are you a fan of their ranch? Like I didn't even know they had like special ranch. And then my sister the other day was talking about like, make sure you get the, I don't even remember what it's called, but she was like big on like how special the ranch was. I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, I guess it's not that special. Who knows? Maybe. Well, dang. (laughs) I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah. I don't like eat ranch, so I don't even know. But she was saying of like, make sure, I think it's called like the kicking or the smacking ranch. I could be completely (laughs) butchering this. I'm just making things up at this point. Uh, Well, (laughs) I'm going to check that out next time I have Jimmy John's. They do like their chips. They do have some really good chips, especially their barbecue chips. But I I do really like their bread. Um, I I mean, I like Jimmy John's in general, but yeah, good stuff. Yep. (laughs) Well, what is your go-to type of music to listen to? And you can say like when you're working out or just on the day to day. I'm kind of all over the place. Like right now I'm in my, I'm getting back to my like country music phase, which has been kind of gone for a while. Um, summer brings it out. Yeah, that, yeah, you're probably right. So that's kind of the phase I'm in right now, but it can, it's like ranges from like, I mean, classic rock to rap to country and everywhere in between. <laughs> Any favorite country songs right now? Any new ones or just kind of some old school stuff? Mm. Not any new ones. I was just listening to Jason Aldean, mm-hmm. some of his, some of his old songs. Because it's been it's been a minute since I've listened to country, and I just you know just on a drive felt like listening to it, and probably wouldn't work. Well, no, I can't say I wouldn't work out to it, but I usually work out to like I love Post Malone, mm-hmm. so he's on my playlist a lot when I'm working out. Yeah, I am a big fan of Post Malone for sure. Do you listen to any podcasts? Are you a podcast listener? I am, but I haven't listened to podcasts in a while, and I also haven't read any books in a while. I feel like that's like a habit that I've really stopped (laughs) um, and need to get back into. For sure. I have definitely dropped off on the reading. I I love to read, but my problem is, is that when I pick up a book, I want to finish it. And so then I will then not do any of my responsibilities and I'll just sit and read the book and it's horrible. And I mean, I can finish a book in one day, but it's just, I'm doing nothing else than reading that book. And so I got really into like, I love thrillers as my like main type of book or mystery books. And so then it's like, I'm on the edge. I want to keep reading. But what I've been trying to do now is like I haven't read like a thriller like like <laughs> I feel so bad saying this. The last book I read was like almost a year ago in regards to like a um a fiction book because it was yeah. literally in July of last year when Alex and I went on the last vacation we went on is I read two books in two days and I just like knocked them out and I loved it. Uh, but since I don't have the ability to just blow off work <laughs> randomly for multiple days in a <laughs> row, um, then I've been getting into some different types of books. And it's something that I can more like pick up, read a little bit and set it back down and not be a big deal. So like um, one book right now I'm reading about grief, um, then one book books about business. And then Alex is like huge into biographies. Like that is his favorite. And so I actually just picked up, um, it just came out, Mac Miller's um, biography just came out. So I just picked that up. I haven't started it yet, but I think it's going to be a good one that I can kind of like pick up, set down. It might take me a little bit to finish, but at least it'll let me read. I feel like I mainly just read like check-ins and a lot of spreadsheets. Like I read, I read a ton of spreadsheets. Yes, uh, but love that. <laughs> outside of that. I know. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. If I um, like I I started a book when I was pregnant, and but as soon as I stop, it's really hard for me to get back into it because I just mm-hmm. forget everything, and then I'm like, oh, I don't feel like redoing this or rereading it, and then I just don't read the second half of the book. So that's my problem. <laughs> but I'm the same way. Like if I I'll start and I'll read the whole thing, or it's like if I don't do that, then I typically don't finish it, which is really annoying. Alex and I do that. Honestly, it's so weird. We'll do that sometimes with like TV shows of like Queen's Gambit, for example. It's six episodes. It's nothing crazy. We watch like the first four or five and we're like, we love this so much. We still have never finished the six episodes. Oh and I don't know why. Like we also love this show called Secession and we watched like all oh, of it. Yeah. But then it was like the last season came out and we were waiting for like the season to finish so that we could just like basically binge it. And because we like it's just when it's week to week, unless it's something like The Bachelor, then I just forget. It's just like in one ear, out one out the other. And so we were like waiting for it to pile up and then we like forgot about it. And we just like, we still tell people, we're like, Secession is such a good show. <laughs> and I'm like, I still think we have a season left to watch. That's hilarious. We, I Zach know. and I have done that a couple of times with, um, I don't know if you ever watched Weeds. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we, I've seen it before like a long time ago, but Zach and I started it and we still haven't finished the last season for whatever reason. And that and it's been like a year. Yeah. And I don't know why we do that. I think it's just, I, I look like we talked about the Queen's Gambit the other day. And I was like, you know, we still have one episode to watch. Of <laughs> oh my that. God. <laughs> like we watched like all four or five in a row. And then we're just like, six one, we'll get to it <laughs> one of these days. We'll get to that next year. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll have like a day that'll just be like leftover day. And it's like, let's finish up all the things that we've started and not finished. That's actually kind of exciting though. I know. Yeah. We'll get a lot of endings. Yeah. A lot of endings coming up. <laughs> yeah. Alex is a huge fan of Breaking Bad. He's tried to get me to watch it. I think I've only watched the first season because it's like, I just haven't gotten into it. It's not a hundred percent my vibe, but. Well, it's interesting. So um, ever since having Bodhi, I don't know if other moms can relate to this, but I'm very sensitive to certain things now. Like, I, I can't watch as much violence, I've found. So, like, Breaking Bad has a lot of violence, and I just, like, it's different for me. Um, Do you feel like it's just because it's, like, I have a child now, so, like, that's insane to see that type of violence? Yeah. Yeah, I bet other people feel that way for sure. And, like, I love, like, mystery or, like, murder-type um, shows, but I, I couldn't watch any of that through pregnancy at all. Yeah. I'm uh, like one thing within pregnancy that I'm very, um, not nervous about, I don't know the right word, but like, you can't crack your knuckles because of like how much relaxin is in your body of like, you can't like crack your back and your knuckles. And I like crack my knuckles and my back all of the time. And I'm like, man, I'm because I was talking to my massage therapist. I I can't. I'm literally I'm so (laughs) bad about it. I was talking to my massage therapist and she was like one of the best things post pregnancy was like when I could finally like crack my back. And when she said it, I was like, what do you mean? Finally. And she was like, you know, the relaxin. I was like, yes, I know the relaxin. I just never connected the dots in my head that that was something I couldn't do. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I guess I never really had a knuckle cracking problem because I didn't I never thought of it through pregnancy. (laughs) Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing, turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty? I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. So you said you did. Li- you do listen to podcasts. You just haven't recently. What are the podcasts that you would listen to? So, well, a lot of like true crime okay. podcasts. So that's kind of, I guess that's like a guilty pleasure too. I would always listen to, I don't know if you 
are into that, but my favorite murder, um, one of my favorite ones, and I haven't listened to that in probably like a year and a half. I haven't ever really gotten into true crime. I did. I know this isn't true crime necessarily, but it's in the vein of I watched um, what's the only murders murders in the building um, where it's the it's a TV show and it's with Martin Short, um, Selena Gomez and um, oh gosh, why am I forgetting one of the. It's another Martin, um, the guy who's in Cheaper by the Dozen, who's the dad in Cheaper by the Dozen. I don't know. Okay. Well, so Steve Martin. So it's not Martin Martin. Oh. Steve Martin. Something Martin. <laughs> it's another type of Martin. Um, and <laughs> it's a TV show. I think it's on Hulu. And they're like solving murders. And then they start a true crime podcast in the show. But that is another thing where I watched like the first two seasons. And then the third season I never watched. I don't know why. I just I think that one person told me of like it wasn't that good. And I was just like, OK, then I just won't watch yeah. it. Sure. That's everything I need to know to <laughs> skip that. Yeah. I'm, who knows? I just decided not to. Uh, but I think that true crime, like I, Alex always jokes that I'm the epitome of like, I don't, it's like, you know, your environment is very important of what you listen to and what you, uh, the people you surround yourself with and all of that. And like the only music I listen to is like feel good music. Like I don't really listen to, like I'll listen to some rap, but I don't necessarily listen to something that's like very vulgar and like negative. I'm like, it's like, it's normally pretty feel good music. And then for shows, basically all that I watch right now is like comedies and then like makeup channels and stuff. But it's like, I, I'm literally just, I'm just trying to laugh. Like, like, that's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm just trying to laugh a little in this life. Yes. <laughs> no, I love that. That's that's kind of what I've been on, too. Like, like I said, I can't really watch a lot of violent or scary things anymore. I used to love it. Now I just, a good comedy is great. Mm-hmm. Show me like, something funny. <laughs> do you watch any, like, comedians or more of just, like, comedy-type shows? Um, well, we watch different stand-ups. Okay. What are your favorite stand-ups recently? I'm like all about stand-ups. Oh my gosh. I'm so bad at names and remembering things. <laughs> I'll just get back to you on that. <laughs> <That's> a, okay. <laughs> really, a mom brain it's, or a oh business my God. owner brain. <laughs> Love having that excuse. I know. <laughs> oh my She's goodness. my regular brain, but we'll call it mom brain. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm going to use all the excuses that I can in a, you know, yeah. in a good way-ish uh, when I'm pregnant. Um, and I've already, exactly. Alex is like, I'm going to wait on you hand and foot. And I was like, "You, be- I'm carrying your child. You should. That's exactly what should happen. Bring me snacks. <laughs> yes. Give me feet massages. Because mm-hmm. he always says, like, when I make food, it tastes better. And I'm like, well, you're going to have to learn to make some food that tastes better because you're going to be cooking for the both of us. And he's like, oh my gosh, I didn't think that all the way through. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be something you're going to be taking over. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't wait for you guys. I know. It'll be very, very exciting when it happens. We actually are planning a, do you guys have any trips uh, planned coming up? We have so many trips planned. Oh, wow. You guys normally are on the go. You have so much going on, which is another thing where every time that you have like come back to Ohio, it's been something of like, you're like, I'm going to be there these dates. I'm like, those are the only dates I couldn't have seen you because I'm going to be out of town. Um, So what all do you got going on? We have, let's see, well, supposed to go to Columbus in August. It might just be Zach who goes. We have uh, a wedding in Louisville. We have a wedding in California. Um, we are going to, we're going to the mountains this weekend. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones I can think of. I know there's something else that I'm missing, but we're on the go. So Bodhi will be on a plane here for the first time in the next couple months. That's what I was just about to ask if he was going to be joining you guys or if someone was going to be watching him. Oh yeah. He's coming along. That was one thing we said. We we're like, when we have kids, we don't want to change like drastically change our lives we just want to integrate him into our lives and and try to do everything that we normally do I think we've done a pretty good job at it yeah oh for sure all the I love seeing you guys on hikes and everything it makes me so freaking happy because I know that's like what you and Zach would be doing anyways um and I just love seeing him join he loves it so fun that makes me so freaking happy uh yeah we were planning a trip um 
we're as a family, like my my mom, my brother, my sister, me, and Alex um, are planning a trip to Italy um, for October, and it's basically Amazing. a trip. We've n- I've never been. I, I was about to say out of the country. I have been out of the country. I've never been to Europe, and I'm very excited because like if you ask me of like where would be a place you want to travel, like I do want to travel different places, but it's not like oh I have this long list of like all these in- places I want to go. It's like I've always wanted to go to Lake Como, and I've always wanted to go to Greece. And so we're going to be going to Lake Como and Rome. And I'm like, I get to live my Lizzie McGuire like oh, dream. Oh I, it's going to be incredible. Um, and we get to go to Milan and I'm like so jazzed. But we are talking of like, okay, do we do the trip this year or we do the trip next year? Because um, this trip is actually like part of my dad's life insurance money. And so my mom's like, the trip's on me. And then she sent another text. She goes, well, oh. actually the trip's on dad. <laughs> um, so oh. it's someplace that they've been twice together. Um, and even part of my tattoo too is like a um, Ducati and he all he wanted to do was like ride a Ducati up like around all of Lake Como and so he did that and had like an incredible time and so my mom was like very confident after he passed she was like I'm taking everyone to Italy. And I was like, twist my arm. Sure, I'll go. Uh, (laughs) But the moral of that was we were kind of deciding of like, do we go this year or next year? Like, when do we plan it for? Um, And Alex was like, well, like, you're probably going to be pregnant next year. And I was like, yeah, well, if I, if it could could be my baby moon of like, before I cannot travel anymore, I was like, but that is probably the limit. Otherwise, it's going to have to be a certain time past that because I don't know what that looks like of bringing a newborn slash baby (laughs) to a foreign country. I just don't know what that looks like. Um, so we're, we're very excited for when that time comes for us. And we're just kind of getting everything set up business-wise, um, cleaning up some different stuff around the house because we're so bad. We have like boxes from when we even just first moved here that still need to be like cleaned out and freaking out of my hair is what they need. <laughs> yeah. No, that's amazing. First of all, I'm super jealous of your Italy trip. And I mean, that's so awesome that your dad allowed that to happen. And Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's awesome. It's going to be really fun. fun. I'm very excited. I already started my Pinterest board of what things I want to do and wear and eat and all that. Um, So my mom was asking of like, everyone submit like at least one thing that you want to do. And we'll try to make at least like one main thing for each person. Um, And I submitted multiple things, but hopefully they end (laughs) up all happening. um, Where (laughs) I was like, because they, um, she's going through like a travel agency type of thing. And they'd sent of like these eight hour tours of like each day we were there. And I was like, I don't know if I want to be on an eight hour tour for the whole time we're there. Like a tour would be nice, but I'm like, I either want to go on a food tour where we're going around and trying like all different foods or a food tour in the fact of like, learning like Laura went to Italy. She was more towards like the Amalfi Coast and like more south than we're going. But she ended up doing like this lemon farm tour that she said was like the most incredible thing hands down would 100% recommend it to anyone of like they went through this lemon farm. Then they also learned how to like, they also had ricotta there and they made pizzas. They had limoncella and like all this. And I was like, I would love an experience like that. Um, Or like a cooking class. I was like, I want to do that, learn how to make something. Or they have like Since coffee is really big there, I'm like something within roasting coffee. Um, So I'm really excited trying to dig into it because we were kind of up in the air if we were going. So I wasn't wanting to make like a bunch of plans and spend time like thinking about it. But now since we have like the green light, we like just got the green light today of like we're 100% going. And so I'm like, my mind's going crazy. And I'm going to eat so much (sighs) dairy while I'm there. I am literally going to have gelato every single day, multiple times a day, probably. But I'm so excited to just have so much dairy. Oh, God, that's so awesome. Yeah. And it's kind of, I mean, we plan on doing a Europe trip next year mm-hmm. um, and just bring in Bodhi and hope, fingers crossed, it goes well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's also cool that you get to do that before mm-hmm. and just like live it up, do your thing, not worry about anything. And have the time of your life. I know. It's going to be weird because it's going to be the longest I've taken off of work before. Like the 
longest I had taken off work up until now has been seven days. And that was only for our trip last year um, for our five-year wedding anniversary. Outside of that, we had only ever taken like four or five days fully off of work because most of the time when we travel, we still work some. And so when we went on our anniversary trip, we're like, we're not working at all. And so this trip is going to be like a 10-day trip. And so it's going to be um, kind of a little test of like taking that time away from work and being able to just have everything running um, without us. But uh, it is still a little bit scary of navigating that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good for you to do that too. I was like, I didn't even take off time right after. After he died. So like, I can take these 10 days and I'll be good to go. <laughs> if anyone gives me grief, I'll, I just, that's what I, pe some people call it dark humor, but I'm like, it's honestly of like, if he's like, first he would think it's funny too, but it's also the aspect of like, if I can't have fun with it, what am I just going to be a sad sack about it the whole time? Like I'm already a sad about it enough. I might as well have right. some fun with it too. And so yeah. we joke of like, um, Alex got like pulled over uh, for going fast um, like a few months ago and he was just like, oh, my like my father-in-law died. And I was like, that's exactly what it's for of like this is you just use the excuse because it, it did happen and it did suck. But like, you know, make it light, make it something that you can. I don't know, not used to your advantage, but kind of, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, yeah. this is what happened. So I'm like, I, did, I yeah. took uh, a week off of check-ins, but I still worked that whole week. And so I'm like, I got time stored up. I'm good to go. Like, I, I'm I'm set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are. You y'all need to just live that up and enjoy every minute of it. It's gonna be so amazing. Now, what is the one thing that you are looking forward to if or when you get back to like the gym gym instead of training at home? Uh, equipment. <laughs> I have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like five sizes of dumbbells here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really just excited to have equipment. And mm -hmm. to be at a place where I can lift heavier, like right now I'm being challenged with mm -hmm. lighter weights because I haven't picked up a, a weight, you know, in a long time. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for that. That's what I'm most excited for. Have you guys ever thought about a home gym? Yes. I really, I'm like, try, every day I'm like nudging Zach because he works in the basement. I'm like, we could totally make half of this a home gym mm -hmm. instead of a like another couch and TV, which we don't need, like let's make it a gym. It's perfect. I don't have to leave. We can work out together here. Like my life would be so much easier with the home mm -hmm. gym and he's, he's getting there. Good. And well, hopefully Alex will be able to push him along a little bit here in July and just talk about it because it, it truly is like, I thought that I would hate having a home gym and I would still go to the gym. And it's probably because I was just thinking of like the home workouts I've done in the past and being in a place where it's like, okay, I'm using bands and then maybe Boring. some dumbbells. Like, um, yeah. But obviously we have equipment, <laughs> equipment um, at home right. and it is like my absolute favorite thing. And it is the <sighs> only way that I've been able to like, keep any semblance of a routine throughout this whole past like because this whole past year and a half to two years has been extremely tumultuous for us um and right. it's something where i don't believe that i would be able to go to the gym um even once a week it, with everything that has been going on and especially within just like being emotional and all that it's like i have my i got my space i can just do how what i need to do if i'm only in there for a little bit if i'm in there for longer then i'm in a good place but it was funny as i've gone through these episodes of um i've had on so far laura Bailey and Carly Ann and then you and Laura Bailey and Carly Ann all have like home gyms um to some degree. Okay, well, yeah, and I was now like, I now you just got so to at club. this point. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I went, I think it just would be so cool to have Bodie there, mm -hmm. like watching me work out, kind of being an integrated in it. Oh, a hundred percent. And I hate our the gym that we go to. It's terrible. So <laughs> I'm never motivated to go there. Not that that matters, but like I never want to go to that gym. So it does. I mean, it doesn't matter because it's like you're going to do it anyway. But at the same time, it's like I like that's what we were talking about of Alex was like, I sometimes miss having different equipment or seeing people at the gym. And I was like, I don't miss those same things as you, but like teach their own. <laughs> but I'm also like, I don't even there's not even a gym near us that I would go to because no one has better equipment than us. That's also taken care of as well as ours is because like think of like lifetime, like, yes, we have a lifetime near us, but 
I mean, if anyone has followed me for a while, I have gripe with Lifetime. Um, but it's like their equipment isn't even that well taken care of. It's not like recalibrated. There's stuff that is so wonky. And I'm like, I don't want this piece of equipment that someone hasn't wiped down and has been Ew. jerked yeah. all over the place. I'm like, I just want to have my equipment my stuff and be able to take care of it well. <laughs> exactly. I'm with you. I could care less to see other people. I'm like, I'm good in my own home, like antisocial, <laughs> do my thing and be done with it. But yeah, our gym's really dirty too, which is another reason why I'm just like, I just don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. I can't like stand it with people just not taking care of the equipment and it's like so gross it's crazy because it's like gyms aren't money makers by any means of like if you are owning a gym like you know that you're not making a ton of money off of it most of the time gym owners are making money off of the things that aren't the gym like the different like if they have like a cafe or they sell protein bars or whatever it may be that's where they're like making the money and it makes sense of like why they're not upkeeping the equipment as well because it's like they're not necessarily making money from people using that and equipment is so expensive. So I understand, but it's also like if I'm going to be paying to go to a gym and like lifetime is extremely expensive to go to, then it's like I want nice equipment that's taken care of. And I don't feel like that's yeah. too much to ask for someplace that's charging like, I, what is it now? Like $120 for one person a month? Like that that's crazy. is outright. And like, I understand they have different things to it of like, okay, they have the cafe, they have the the sauna, they have the steam room, they have the basketball courts. I get that. But I'm personally not using those things. Like I'm just using right. the gym and leaving. And exactly. then it's, it's just like, I, I know some people might be listening to this and be like, that's such a privilege to have that. And I 100% agree. It is such a privilege to have a home gym. But it's like, that was something that we worked extremely hard for to be able to have that totally. privilege, because it is so important to us and makes our life that much easier to be able to go to the gym, have the flexibility. And that's something also within thinking about like, what the next few, um, like, what the next year looks like of like likely being pregnant of being able to just like have that space have my kiddo there once they're born um being able to be something of like okay they can be there in like their little seat while i'm working out and watch me and i can still watch them um and it not be something of like i need to take this time away and now i need to have someone watch this and do this and this and this it's like i can multitask a little bit um and enjoy that time exactly and y'all have a really dope gym so yeah. <laughs> always perfect. hoping to make it bigger though if you ask either of us and it's so funny because when we talk about it um alex will talk about like getting a bigger space and people will kind of look over at me and be like oh is like is that okay and i'm like i'm right there with him wanting the bigger space like i will <laughs> buy a warehouse if like that were in the cards to just fill with gym equipment um i'm like they think it's like him against me i'm like i'm all for it like let's buy the gym let's, let's buy the space let's have it <laughs> exactly i know i'm really hoping that we can because right now I, I moved the dumbbells up to the rooftop and it's mm -hmm. actually been kind of fun to work out up there because it's hot and it's a different kind of scene mm -hmm. but i'm ready to get get moving on this home gym like Let's make it happen. I'll, I'll make sure Alex pushes it along a little bit. Maybe we'll come over to the house and I'll go down to watch something downstairs. And Alex will be like, you know, this would be a really great spot to put a squat rack over here. You, yeah. Have you ever yeah. thought of that? Perfect size to add in just a nice uh, leg presser or something. Yeah, I think that would look perfectly <laughs> here. Exactly. Oh, oh goodness. I'm dreaming of it. <laughs> well, I will be putting all of your information below so people can definitely follow you on Instagram as well as be able to reach out to you if they need anything from you. But is there anything else that you feel like you would want to share with people either about yourself or about things postpartum um, or just anything in general? Yeah. Well, first, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. And I know I think it's just, you know, Every phase of life is different in its own heart and um, pregnancy and postpartum have their own challenges. But if you can do your best to see the positive in it all and like challenge yourself to think differently about certain things um, and, and challenge your body as well, like when you're up, not everyone can, but like if you're up for it, if you feel like you're capable of doing it, like just challenge yourself and you'll be so surprised at what you're capable of, especially like, I mean, delivering a child 
women are so freaking strong Badass. and amazing. Mm-hmm. Like you will blow your mind with what you're capable of. So just challenge yourself and um, yeah, you'll do amazing if you're in that situation, of course. I love that so much. Well, thank you so much for being on. I know I've said it in a few of the other episodes, but I'm like, I kind of started this just because I wanted to chat with my friends and I know we're all busy. We like everyone who's been on has been a mom. So obviously they're busy, but then also business owners and doing different stuff and social media and all that. And I'm like, it's just nice that I get like an hour-ish to chat with my friends. And of course, uh, if other people are listening and enjoying it, then great. Uh, But it's a little selfish for me of just being able to like hang out with my friend and, and talk about about some stuff. That's perfect. It's like habit stacking, podcast yeah. and hanging <laughs> <I'm> out. Multitasking <laughs> right now, of course. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Sue. Yep. Have a good one. And I'll see you in July. Can't wait. <laughs>